my apologies. I was on mute. <laughs> um, good morning, everybody. I thank you all for being here. Um, thank you for uh, attending today. Just wanted to remind everybody that we are going to be um, recording this session. Um, you should have gotten a notice when you were um, uh, registering for the event that everything will be recorded and then posted online through our various social channels. So I uh, just wanted to remind everybody that that was happening. Um, I want to thank you all for being here today. And we are going to get started uh, right now. I believe everybody Everybody is here, so um, just want to check and make sure everybody can see the presentation um, that we're going to get started with. I see, I see nods, so that's good. Um, I see a thumbs up. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so my name is Krista Garofola. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer here at the Treasure Coast Food Bank, and. Um, Thank you all for being with us today for our first webinar. Um, we've been doing a lot of these in person, and so this is our first foray into doing it in the digital realm. And um, so I hope everybody is, uh, in a, we're very happy to have so many of you here and um, to provide you with all this information about the things we're doing in the community around the topic of child nutrition. Um, so this is the agenda for today. Um, I'm going to get us started with a little intro and a little background on our direct services. Um, then we're going to be hearing from a couple of our partners as well as some members of our staff that are um, doing a lot of work in the child nutrition space. And then we're, we're going to round things out with a little overview video, um, kind of give you a visual of everything that we're doing out there in the community. And then we'll leave some time for question and answer as well. So just to get started, the reason that we're here and um, is to really talk about the impact that hunger has on children in our community. And we wanted to start with introducing you to two um, children that are a part of our summer meals program, give you a little background about them. Um, so Heavenly and Sunny have known each other all their lives since they were babies. They go to the same school and they attend the same summer camp. Um, Heavenly is about to start second grade and her favorite subject is reading. Her favorite fruit is red grapes and her favorite vegetable is carrots. Um, and Sunny is about to start third grade and her favorite subject is math. Her favorite fruit is mango and her favorite vegetable is broccoli. I think those are all wonderful choices. Um, so due to community services and programs like our summer meals program, um, both of them have access to enough nutritious food that they enjoy, a lot of healthy fruits and vegetables. Um, and because they have access to that, they can concentrate on important things like learning and doing well in school and playing with their friends and, you know, following their dreams. Um, but for one in four children on the Treasure Coast, that's not the reality. And hunger for them requires us to come up with solutions. And thankfully, us and our partners in the community, we're here to help with that. Um, so just to give you some statistics, nationally child food insecurity rates can reach almost 50% in some counties. Um, in Florida, um, we are at a high of 35.3%. On the Treasure Coast, one in four children are experiencing hunger. And in particularly, Okeechobee County is among the top 20 counties in Florida with the highest child food insecurity rate of 23.8%. Um, there's lots of different reasons um, that come together sometimes or uh, uh, exist in isolation, depending on the family of why um, children uh, may not have enough food on their table. Uh, some of it has to do with the income of their household. Um, there are many parents out there that are, um, you know, find it hard to put enough food on the table, even when they're working two to three jobs. Um, a lot of them are uh, you know, dependent on being able to get hours at maybe their uh, retail or restaurant uh, places of employment. They're not guaranteed hours every week. So it's a struggle for them to be able to really maintain a household budget uh, to make sure that everybody is getting enough food to be healthy and thrive. The other thing is um, dovetailing in with that is affordable housing. I'm sure we all know and have seen some of the 
catastrophic costs and increases um, throughout the state and throughout the country for um, rentals, uh, mortgages, uh, home insurance, um, you know, there's just so many different things regarding housing that have been going up for families. The other things that have been going up are food costs and the cost of child care. Um, sometimes it's just out of reach for a lot of these parents who are trying to do the best that they can to meet the needs for their families. Um, so the effects of this on children is multi-layered. It's multifaceted. So it impacts their learning. It, 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 they can't concentrate in school. They, um, you know, they, they may have trouble attending school if they, you know, because of health issues. Um, and then it also ca causes developmental delays. Um, physical impacts of hunger um, are also very significant. So it, it's impacting children on a number of fronts. And so when children don't have enough food, when they do have enough food, they can concentrate on the important things. They can learn, they can play with their friends, they can um, you know, work towards a goal and follow their dreams. So um, what we do and what we do in conjunction with partners is we provide child food programs. And you're gonna hear a little bit about some of our direct service programs that are specifically targeted towards children, both in school and outside of school. Um, I will say that um, all of our programs that are out in the community, whether it's through an agency partner running a food pantry or soup kitchen or mobile distributions, all of our programs are serving households with children. But we're gonna to be today talking about the programs that are really focused on and targeting children, both in school and out of school. Um, the other thing we can do is connect those families with benefits to help supplement their households. And we're gonna hear from one of our staff members that um, does that work a day in and day out with a team of um, a, uh, application assistants that can work with families to get them connected to those benefits in the community. And then the other thing we do is that we advocate for policies and food programs that improve the situations of these households. Um, and we're gonna be hearing from a couple of our partners in the community um, that are doing the work that they're doing because of the way uh, this community has advocated for child nutrition programs, um, of impacting both state and federal policies that um, are able to bring funding um, and policy structure to the community to allow us to run programs that really meet the needs of children and their families. So I'm gonna get us started with some of the programs that we have here at the food bank. Um, we offer a variety of programs for children at risk and um, we partner with all sorts of partners in the community. Um, there are, some of them are schools, community centers, after school programs. Um, we really try to work with as many people in the community um, that are working with children so that we can provide them with enough nutritious food and enough resources in order for them to live a healthy life and to, to thrive and, and work towards achieving their goals. Um, so one of these programs is our backpack program. So this program um, provides uh, weekend backpacks for children uh, who need additional nutrition uh, when they go home on the weekends. M most of these children qualify for the free and reduced lunch at their school, um, but there may be um, some scarcity around having food on the weekends. So we have um, backpacks that we assemble and provide to a variety of different schools throughout our four county service area. Um, they get distributed weekly to the child to bring home. And it's filled with um, individual portions of child-friendly foods. Um, it has uh, canned meals, snacks, uh, breakfast cereals, milk, and juice, um, just so that they can make sure that they're um, getting access to food on the weekend. And through that program last year, we provided 25,200 backpacks to the partners that we work with on this program. Um, some other programs that we have that are, um, you know, helping children 
uh, our, uh, the school pantry program and the after school meals program. Our school pantry program is actually an extension of our backpack program, um, recognizing that a lot of times if there's a child in need of food, there are others in the household that also need access to more food. So our school pantry program is a variation on our regular food pantries that we have out in the community, um, but it's located on a campus of a school and it's available for children and their families to access that food. So um, they're accessing traditional pantry staples, um, you know, canned vegetables, canned fruits, um, you know, boxes of pasta, jars of pasta sauce, um, anything that you would need in your um, pantry to be able to create a good healthy meal um, for your family. And last year, we provided 34,311 meals through that program. Um, it's, uh, you know, we have this program at all levels of schools, ranging from elementary um, up to high school and even college campuses in the area. Um, so we, we really try to, to meet the need of the entire family through that program. Um, another program that we have is our after school meals program. That is a program where we partner with uh, three YMCA locations on the Treasure Coast to provide meals during their after school programs. Uh, we are in our production kitchen every single day, making fresh hot meals to be delivered daily to these sites. Um, we uh, utilize a approved meal pattern from the state so that we can make sure that all of the meals are healthy and nutritious, but we also take great care in making sure that it's food that children will um, enjoy and they will eat and, um, you know, uh, and ha have a healthy, balanced meal that they, they really like. Try to introduce them to some uh, vegetables maybe that they don't have access to normally and get them really excited about eating those vegetables going forward. And then one of the programs that we have that's running right now, um, which is our out of one of our out of school programs is our summer meals program. And this program provides meals to children who normally receive free and reduced lunch during the school year, but when the schools are closed, um, those meals are missing from them in their households. Um, so we provide sites that provide either breakfast, lunch, snacks, um, up to two of those meals through their summer programming. And um, that's another program where we are providing uh, those meals every single day. We have people that are working hard in the kitchen right now, um, putting together lunches and packing up snacks and breakfast and juice and milk um, to bring to these sites so that children can have access to nutritious food over the summer. And right now we have about 23 sites running and we're really, really excited that um, we have so many that are operating this year because we know that we're really um, able to increase this summer the amount of um, meals that we're getting out there to people be able to help more people in need this year. Um, okay, yeah, and some of the menu items, in case you're wondering, um, there, there's also a meal pattern for that we have to follow from the state, um, but it includes wraps and sandwiches, fruits and vegetables, um, you know, healthy whole grain snacks um, and healthy whole grain cereals. And, um, you know, we, we try to, uh, once again, what we do with all of our prepared meal programs is try to make the food um, as healthy as possible, but also make it so that it's appealing to the kids. Um, they have to be able to want to eat it in order to get the nutrition. So um, we, we really do a lot of work in menu planning just to make sure that we're getting that balance of healthy, but, um, you know, appealing to the kids. Um, and that brings us to one of our partner presentations. Um, uh, this location is a participant in our summer meals program. And one of the wonderful things when I was talking about earlier about our advocacy, um, this site and Sonia will do a wonderful job of explaining everything they're doing over there at the library, but um, the library in Okeechobee is one of our um, rural non-congregate sites. Um, this was made possible through uh, federal legislation that was passed last year, um, allowing us to have some flexibility of operating in rural areas. They recognize that it's sometimes very difficult for 
for people to get to sites um, and get to them on a regular basis. So one of the flexibilities they were able to put into the program this year was that we can set up grab and go sites um, where um, normally at the summer meal sites, uh, children have to come, they have to eat on site, congregate style, no food can actually be, be taken from the site. Um, with this flexibility, um, people are able to go to the library, pick up a, a week's worth of meals and bring it home um, to enjoy in their household. So because we're able to advocate on the federal level and, and bring um, partnerships together to be able to meet that need, um, that's a, it, this, this site is a wonderful example of, of how that advocacy pays off and, and how it's really impacting the community. So um, I'm going to turn things over to Sonia Chapa from the Okeechobee Public Library. She's going to tell you all about what they're doing out there and how they're helping so many children in Okeechobee. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, um, my name is Sonia Chapa. I am the librarian at the Okeechobee Public Library and the assistant director for our um, Heartland Library Cooperative, which covers uh, five counties here in the Heartland area of Florida. Um, Okeechobee is um, our branch that is working with the Treasure Coast Food Bank. And first off, I just wanna say thank you so much. We are extremely grateful for being a part of this program. Um, it has been even more successful than we had anticipated. Um, I, I have some numbers that I'm gonna throw, um, throw you to begin with, but um, we previously only were able to provide meals um, in the summer through our school district who had bus uh, sites throughout the county. Um, while this was uh, successful to an extent, um, for instance, in uh, last summer, 2023, we were able to serve 480 children with 960 breakfast and lunches served. We have found this year that it is not always the, I, while we're grateful that this service continues in our county, it doesn't work for every part of our community. Um, we are a very big area. We are very rural in the outer skirts of our area particularly, and um, it just doesn't work for everyone. There, are, um, as mentioned by Krista, there are parents that are working two or three jobs. They can't go to that bus stop every day. They can't sit there while their children is eat while their child is eating there because they're not allowed to take the food out. So all of that flexibility that has been advocated for has really helped a lot of uh, members of our community that were not being served before. Um, so so far this year, just in June, we were able to serve 315 kids, um, and that was 3,150 lunches and afternoon snacks. So those meals have increased way beyond anything that we had anticipated. Um, and because of the success of um, just all of these different areas of our community coming in and, you know, asking for these meals and trying to make it, um, we have been able to increase the number of meals graciously provided by uh, the Treasure Coast Food Bank. Um, we started with 55 meals. We were out within 15 minutes distributing. So we're supposed to distribute within the, from 11 to 12 every Thursday at our site. We were out in 15 to 20 minutes distributing off for, for all 55 children. Um, we increased that in the uh, next couple of weeks there and uh, to 75 children. We were out within 30 minutes. So we have increased that starting this um, actually yesterday. We've increased to 100 children served and we were able to go the full hour this time and make and distribute all 100 meals or 100 sorry, it's 500 meals to all 100 children um, and make sure that we are trying to serve as many members of our community as possible. So uh, there is a great need in Okeechobee as mentioned before. Um, we are, this next slide will show, <laughs> we um, definitely are within the, the poverty rates. We experience one of the highest rates of food insecurity, unfortunately. Um, so there is a great need and that is why that number has continued to increase. Um, Okeechobee County in 2022, I mean, these numbers here do show, um, while the median household income has increased by about 10,000 um, in the last two years, so has the unemployment rate and the poverty rate. Um, there are parents working multiple jobs to try to provide for their kids, try to pay for childcare, and they are hit the hardest in the summer. 
um, the childcare, rental costs, everything that was mentioned by Chris, by Krista, is it's increasing and it's it's getting even harder for them. So it, being able to provide this alternative of a grab and go option, if they can, you know, get that hour off of work, take their lunch break, whatever it may be, to get to the library and get those five days worth of meals, it is really really helping these families. Um, we have families that are driving in from the outer very outer skirts of our rural area once a week to get these meals because they cannot make it to that bus stop daily and they are busy working they're trying to provide as much as they can but it is getting harder for them um so while all the statistics do tell that story i think the people tell a greater a greater story um we have seen even more families um, especially working families in our uh, library this year, and it is increasing the diversity this year. And I think while I would definitely love to advocate that the library is doing a great job with our programs and services that we are providing, I do think one of the um, biggest draws this summer is this summer feeding program. Um, through the lunch distribution, we are definitely seeing an increase in our Spanish speaking patrons. We have a very large Spanish speaking population here in Okeechobee County, um, and we've you know, through various efforts and, and initiatives have tried to draw that crowd in. It is hard at times to to reach people where they're at, especially with language barriers um, and trying to provide resources consistently for these um, communities. The summer feeding program has definitely brought in even more of their Spanish speaking patrons who are in need of assistance and who, you know, they come in, they get the meals, and one of the first questions I, I get asked is, what is the information you need from me so that I can get these meals? Do you need identification? Do you need this? Do you need this? And you know, we, we tell them the all I need to know is how many children you have, are you know, what their ages are, are they here with you? If they're not here with you, you know, we have another way of verifying, but I'm not asking what services they're already receiving from the government. I'm not asking any of these other barriers that makes them hesitant to enter and sometimes take advantage of these sort of resources. So it has really helped these communities. Um, even this week, when we increased to 100 um, children served, um, I, I got even more uh, Spanish speaking patrons in who weren't aware that we were doing this the entire summer. No matter how much marketing we do in both English and Spanish, sometimes it is just word of mouth and you happen to come by. Um, so every time we get anyone in here, but especially, you know, with our Spanish speaking patrons, I encourage them to please let us let anyone they know, know that this is happening, especially, you know, if, if word of mouth is the best way to get this information out, that's what we're trying to do. Um, we also, as I mentioned, have an increase in our patrons that are living on the outer fringes of our county who cannot make that bus stop daily. Um, they are taking that hour off of work to come in. You know, they verified that they have this many children. They have six children they're working multiple jobs and they're able to stop in the library once a week to get these meals. So it is really helping them. Um, one thing that surprises me is that even though we've been doing this for a month, um, every week we're getting, even yesterday, we were getting people who didn't know this was happening. They didn't know this was available. They didn't know that we were giving meals and they're, they're very grateful that they happened to stop by or that they heard it from someone while they were already in town. Um, and it, it really does surprise me, but also it just shows that the people that we already, that even with the people that we were already serving, there are even more who are in need of assistance in our community. Um, and like I mentioned, just the comments that we're getting back from our patrons regarding summer feeding is that they are extremely grateful and they're extremely appreciative that this is happening. Um, a lot of the comments are along these lines of thank you for this, we're really struggling. I can't keep my kitchen stocked. Um, it prices are increasing. It's getting harder out here and every little bit is helping. Um, another one is that we have had a lot of teachers come in to tutor throughout the summer and we're getting comments from them as well that, you know, one of them that said that this was amazing because they really worry about their students who they know are only getting meals, full nutritious meals because it's free during the school year. And so they do worry in the summer. So to find out that the library is providing five days worth of meals, they are extremely grateful and um, very appreciative of the service. 
Um, and as mentioned, uh, we have been busier than ever. If I look a little tired, it's because this summer has completely blown our past summers out of the water. Um, we, our, our numbers are crazy and I could go into all those details, but it's, it's boring, I promise. Um, but the, the fun part is that we are, our, our summer reading program this year, which I includes summer feeding, it has been more successful than we've ever seen before. And I think a big part of that is the summer feeding program. And that's allowing us to capitalize on having these patrons come in who previously didn't use our, our facility and our organization and services, not for lack of trying to meet them, but just they didn't have the time or didn't make it a priority because they were too busy just trying to get by. But if they're able to come in, take an hour, take a day to get the food for their kids, they're able to see the other services that we offer. And this has also, this attention and recognition has also allowed us to increase partnerships with other organizations in our community. So um, we've been able to promote and really, really enhance our services in our summer reading literacy programs. We have, our participation has just exponentially increased. Um, we also have been able to advertise and let people know that we are constantly giving away free books, free snacks, free, free, um, for our story time programs and other free services and giveaways that, you know, our aim is just, we know everyone is struggling. If we're able to give you a craft kit that you can do at home with your kids, that's some entertainment. If you're able to come in and get a DVD, that's some entertainment and we're not charging you for anything. So <clears throat> we're be able to really capitalize on that as well. Um, we've been able to increase our cultural events and really promote those services as well. So with the more Spanish speaking patrons coming in, we're able to advertise directly to them these services that we already have available um, and able to get funding for um, other events. So for instance, this year was our first Juneteenth program, which we were able to promote directly to our African American community and show that we are, you know, celebrating you and we are trying to really build that connection and do it more directly because they are coming in to the library for the summer feeding. Um, and it has also increased community partnerships. Um, with more attention, you get a lot more people willing to help you. So we have been able to form partnerships with our Healthy Start Coalition to provide services for um, parents and, and newborns, um, along with our Education Foundation, um, our East Coast Migrant Head Starts, which serves a lot of our Spanish speaking community. Um, the Kidsville News um, of the, that is made by the Boys and Girls Club of Mark County. They are now coming into Okeechobee County, and um, we are also increasing our participation in, uh, with our Okeechobee County schools. Um, we are, again, very grateful. I'm going to keep saying that. We're very grateful that we are part of this program, and we hope to continue um, in the future in some form of partnership, um, not just during the summer, but throughout the year. So. Uh, we're hoping to bring more meal uh, supply distributions throughout the year, um, to capitalize on nutrition classes that are focused on low income budgets for our area, and more services and events that are focused on families, underserved populations, and the non-English non speaking communities. Um, and this has, I'm so sorry, it's going to keep going off. Um, we are um, helping, all of these services have helped us identify other areas of need. Um, and those include adult education, our after school programs, um, skill building class programs, and art and enrichment. We are hoping to, with these um, continued programs, really target these areas that we know are also in need for our communities. Um, and that's it for me. If you have any questions on Okeechobee County, I will be here until the end of the presentation. But again, one more time, just going to say it, we are extremely grateful for the service, um, it has helped our community more than we could have anticipated. So thank you everyone for, for helping us be part of this. Thank you so much, Sonia, for sharing all of the great work you guys are doing. And um, we're just so happy to be able to partner with you and then build on that partnership going into, um, you know, after the summer and, and throughout the year. So um, thank you again for taking the time to share all of that wonderful information with everyone. Um, I'd like to then introduce our next speaker, um, Ruby Aguirre-Karnas. 
um, Carnes, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> she's the director of a neighbor experience here at the Treasure Coast Food Bank. Um, she works out of our Martin County office and she's going to talk to you a little bit about our case management and our benefits outreach assistance that we provide families, um, particularly families with children, and then also some of the direct services they provide to preteens and teens through our Martin County office. So welcome, Ruby, and thank you for being here. Thank you. Good morning. Um, as Krista mentioned, I am the Director of Neighbor Experience. I have been with the Treasure Coast Food Bank for eight years, and I'm excited to provide an overview of our program, Whole Child Connection. We are proudly supported by the Children's Services Council of Martin County, whom we also have on the webinar today. And we are also supported by the Martin County Board of County Commissioners and Hope Sound Community Chest. If you are unfamiliar with the Whole Child Connection program, um, I'm just going to provide a little bit of an overview. Uh, we are based in Martin County and connect families with services in the community and offer free case management, application assistance for Medicaid, SNAP, cash assistance, and Florida Kid Care. Our program and web-based system are designed to give children and families in Martin County free direct access to community services. Those services are centered around the six dimensions of well being. In essence, if families require assistance, referrals, or information on health resources such as children's health insurance or educational resources such as tutoring, economic support in the form of cash assistance, or other emergency services, the whole child system will match that family with the requested assistance and either send out a direct request to a service provider or add that information to a family success plan for them to be able to access at a later time. Um, a little bit of a history on the program, Whole Child Connection was an independent nonprofit organization in Martin County for a decade before the Children's Services Council of Martin County selected Treasure Coast Food Bank to assume Whole Child Connection after a competitive review process. As of July 2015, the Whole Child families have continued to trust us with their families and children's needs. We're really proud that we have been able to continue to hold their trust as they share some of their most challenging and challenging moments and successes. A few ways that families can connect, get connected to services. So we have a couple of different methods that we use. We utilize our website, which can be found on stophunger.org backslash WCC. That is available 24 seven for families to access. It's available in English or Spanish. We also meet with families in person at one of our seven, seven locations in Martin County by phone. So we do have um, offer services remotely. And I do want to take a moment to highlight all of our advisors and our entire staff here at Whole Child Connection, we are bilingual. So everyone does speak English and Spanish, and that really allows us to be able to connect with the majority of the clients that we serve or Families can also get referred to services through one of our community partners. We frequently receive referrals um, from a number of our partners that have identified families in need, whether it be the Martin County Healthy Start Coalition, Florida Department of Health, uh, the school nurse uh, case management program, nurse family partnership, um, and several others. Some of our outreach locations are our main office, which is located um, off of Dixie Highway, and it is central, centrally located in the Golden Gate area. We're here Monday through Friday. We also do outreach at the Salvation Army of Martin County, where we provide the direct services to families, Hope Sound Civic Center, the YMCA Indian Town Branch, the Elizabeth Lati Library, Hope Sound Mobile Home Park, the Florida Department of Health, both Indian Town and Stewart location. Some of the things that we take into consideration when we're looking for outreach locations is a space that is convenient to, for families to access. While we do offer assistance by phone, we also understand some families prefer that face-to-face -face interaction. And through the outreach efforts, you know, we do what we can to address some of those barriers um, at all of the outreach sites. We are fully equipped with mobile hotspots, laptops, 
portable printers, scanners, and fax capabilities so that regardless of what that family's need, we're able to connect them to services from start to finish without being limited um, by not being in our primary office. So we are fully functioning at any one of the outreach sites that we're at. And as I mentioned, all of our services are available in English and Spanish, but we do also have somebody that we partner with um, at, from our Your Plate Health and Wellness Office. Um, so there is a benefits um, specialist there, and she does speak Creole. So by request, if we do have a Creole speaking family, we can also make sure that they're able to be connected to the same services um, as our other families. Whenever we meet with families, we focus on assessing their needs first. That is essentially the um, essence of the whole child system. It's really about identifying specific needs that families have, helping them create their whole child profile, allowing the system to match um, that family based off of their identified needs. If a family responds within the web system that they do have a specific need, it will match them with an appropriate provider. It is also a client choice system. The client can choose which providers they would like to receive assistance from or share their information providers it local um, providers in Martin County, such as our nonprofit. Other local nonprofits will input their information into our system. We do have about 700 um, listed programs within the system at this moment, and that can be a variety of programs that either covers our resources and referrals, it's going to cover emergency services. So food assistance, clothing, SNAP programs, local food pantries, health insurance, Florida Kid Care, whether it be the health insurance marketplace, the free clinic here in Martin County. Um, it is going to be any kind of service that the family identifies a need for. We do also partner with community partners such as the Arc of Martin County, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Early Learning Coalition, the Hippie Program, uh, Tykes and Teens, just to name a few, um, because it really is a client choice approach. It's whatever the families identify as a need. Um, we do our part to either provide them the information, and again, the information is translated in whichever language they prefer. We have the system that can translate the information in English and Spanish. As I mentioned, our advisors are bilingual. Um, if we need to make a phone call to better connect them um, and allow them to receive the service or provide them the additional time to think about which service they want to access, sometimes the mental health behavioral services, they really you know, want to take time and take that information and consider what their options might be, speak to their partner at home. That's what the system allows them to do. We can either send the direct referral um, to a community partner or we can add it to the family success plan so that they're aware of the information and they can access it at a later time and you know have that time to discuss what their options are um, with their partner at home. Some of the other wonderful work that we do is through our public partnerships with Florida Kid Care and the Florida Department of Health. Uh, the sorry Florida Department of Children and Families and that is for Medicaid SNAP and temporary cash assistance. So that is the direct application assistance that we provide. We service anywhere from, we can meet with families um, up to 300 to 500 families a month that are either requesting assistance or information regarding you know, accessing those programs and we hear far too often how expenses have gone up or a medical emergency has occurred in a family that never needed help in applying for one of those services. We're receiving a lot of a larger number of new families that are now requesting those services. Sometimes there's a little hesitation to apply for the SNAP program because a family sees it as being a burden on the system and not wanting to apply for benefits that you know they don't truly need. But at this point with the way that rent has gone up, just the non-essential um, food items that, that are costing and, and making their household budgets, you know, go to a point where they can't, it's really unaffordable for 
quite several of the families that we assist and a lot of the new families that are being referred to us. Our largest source of referral is word of mouth. So they either have a family that we have assisted that has recommended them to come to us and they know that when they reach out to us, we're going to help them from start to finish. We cover the application when which includes submitting the application, filling out, responding to all the appropriate questions, ensuring that we're making copies for them. They they know they don't have to, it's completely free. They don't have to pay to make copies, to submit a fax. If they have questions, they don't understand a notice um, that comes through to them. It is one of those things where that's the support that we provide. They know when they come to our office, we're gonna be able to help them out, whether it be translating that letter or just allowing them to understand the process of applying for benefits, sometimes new, sometimes renewing, because situations change and it's one of those things where having a program like ours where we can actually guide them through the process, it just helps ease um, their peace of mind to know that there's somebody that's actually going to be working alongside them. One of the other programs, um, aside from the direct application assistance that's really special to us, is the Teen Pantry Program. Our Teen Pantry Program provides free access to personal hygiene products and school supplies during the back to school time. We have serviced over 1,400 teens um, since our last fiscal year. Items do vary by donation, but they frequently include soap, shampoos, deodorants. We always have on hand feminine hygiene products, whether that be pads or tampons, toothpaste, toothbrushes. We we allow the teens, they can actually visit um, once a month. They can either do a walk-in or register online um, at our through our ticket leap, um, which is stophunger.org backslash WCC Teen Pantry. It's available every Monday or Wednesday, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, one of the benefits of that is they don't just do an online registration. When they register online, they can actually let us know if they have specific requests. Oftentimes, um, we'll you would think that they might, you know, ask for something that is a little bit um, out there, but it's normally I can if you have you know acne face wash if you have you know if you have any type of body sprays I would really appreciate it if you have a face scrub or whatever it might be they're not asking for specific name brands they're just asking you know it, it's an opportunity for it really to be a client choice um, of the teens to let us know what it is that they're looking to receive so that it's not just you know a generic bag we do customize um, the items for them and oftentimes some of the feedback that we get is you know that this really does help um, it is one of those things where they either just are really appreciative um, of the fact that they can come in um, request certain items because teens Teens don't want to ask their families when they know that they're already financially struggling for, you know, to put food on the table. It's one of those things where they're just grateful that they know this is completely, completely free to them. All they have to do is, you know, register. They can put whatever comments that they, whatever feedback they have on there. Oftentimes we really do get the feedback where they just really love the program. They love that they have somebody that they can um, actually request items from and they know that they're going to, you know, they're going to, their considerations and requests are going to be taken seriously. And we do our best to tag all of those items and make sure that we let them know, you know, we, we saw your comments. We made sure we customized your bag. Here you go. Um, go on ahead and come in next month. If there's if anything is different or you want something different, just put that on there. It is based off of donations, but oftentimes we are able to accommodate that. And it's one of those things where it is a non food essential. If they are on the SNAP program, this is not one of the items that are covered um, and they are full size items. We're really happy that we can provide them with these customized bags that really they can share with their household. Yes, it's a teen pantry program. The items are going to last them well over a month. Um, they're going to receive anywhere between five to six full size items. Um, sometimes we get to put in, you know, really fun items, like especially for the girls. Sometimes we'll have like nail polishes, nail buffers, you know, different little things that 
they get really excited about, especially during the holiday time. Sometimes we get, you know, some of the holiday kits that are donated to the food bank and they will get passed through to this program so that it can make an impact um, directly to the um, actual children in the community that we serve. So it's a really wonderful way for us to connect with not only the families that we meet every day, but we actually get to put a face to the children that we're serving in Martin County and Oftentimes they'll tell us, please don't ever take this program away. We love that you guys are here. We love that we can come in once a month. Um, nor typically we serve um, 11 to 19 year olds so long as they're enrolled in school. And sometimes the the younger kids will come in and say, oh, I'm a teen and it, it, it'll be a little eight year old girl. And she's like, I can't wait until I can um, access this program. And oftentimes we also um, are really grateful because we'll have some toys on hand where we we're like, oh, okay, well, you know what? Let's let's get something special for you too and we can always kind of meet the needs of some of the younger children um, that come in as well so that's always really exciting and they'll say you know I get something too and you know we make sure that we try and make it special for the entire family um, but it is such a really good moment that we get to take and connect with them. We allow parents and guardians to pick up as well. It does not have to be teen because we do understand um, that sometimes the transportation can be a burden so if there's a registration, we allow the parents or guardians to come in. If they don't have access to it online, again, we do allow walk-in, so we'll they can just register on the spot. And it, it's really just a name and an age, and we will put a bag together for them if they have specific needs. We'll just ask them about it when they're in our office. Um, and I did want to share just a little bit of a story of a family that we recently met with um, that actually has been a whole child client of ours for several years. Um, from the start of her receiving services, they've actually grown to a family of five. Um, their youngest uh, child um, is six, and then their once four-year child, when they first started with whole child, um, they're really proud of him. He's a recent high school graduate. He was actually coming in to receive from the teen pantry, and he recently came in and said he wanted um, an opportunity to volunteer, which we're really excited because a lot of those teens, they see the work that we're doing for them. They want to give back. And then the mom called us and she really wanted us to share this message um, and pass it along. Recently, her husband's income went down further due to only being able to secure um, day labor jobs at the moment. Um, she was super grateful that for the help that she received during our application process because this time around uh, the SNAP benefit was requested. It was approved without any issues. It was more than she thought that she would receive because she she doesn't apply every time. She's really proud of being able to support her family, um, but they have been going through a little bit more of a difficult time lately. Um, however, she just wanted to express how grateful she was that we're here. She knows that she's been coming to us for a long time, but she wanted to let us know that um, when she first came to Martin County, she had no idea of where to start asking for help until she met this program. And she really just wanted to emphasize and let us know that she has spoken to so many other, um, you know, friends and family member that she knows come to this program, which is how she originally heard about us. And she just wanted to let us know that what she hears out in the community is nothing but praise and she wants to us uh, she wanted us to express that she knows we're not just here for her family but for everybody in the community every time she gives us a phone call she's she knows she's going to have someone who's going to listen to her offer additional help when she needs it and she just wanted us to kind of pass that message along and say you know really truly thank you even though their income is modest at the moment, um, they are still able to pay their bills. They know that if they need help, they can just, we're just a phone call away. And really, it was just a really big thank you. And she shared that with us via phone call. And she said, please pass that along to whoever needs to hear it. You're not just helping me, you're helping the entire community. And I hear it. I, she hears the direct feedback. And so I wanted to share that with you today. Thank you so much, Ruby, for sharing all that information and the wonderful notes and the stories about the families that you're working with. Um, Ruby mentioned word of mouth is one of the biggest ways that we get people for that program. And um, we truly uh, value all of the staff that work on that program. They they are the 
um, foundation and the reason why families continue to trust us um, in helping them through some of the difficult times in their lives. Um, it, it can't be done without um, the wonderful people that are sitting down with these families, making them feel comfortable and making them feel like, you know, we can provide them with resources and and, and some hope um, for uh, ways that they can get back on their feet and be able to support their household. So thank you again for all of the work that you guys do. Um, I'm going to turn it over now to our next speaker, Sheree Ramirez from the Children's Services Council of Martin County, uh, one of our valuable funders and partners, particularly with our Whole Child Connection Program. And she's going to talk a little bit about um, the work that they do in partnership with organizations in Martin County that are supporting families and, and children. Thank you for being here, Sheree. Okay, thank you so much for having me. I just want to make sure um, we are in the right view. <laughs> Can somebody give me a thumbs up? Tell me we're in the right view. Okay, perfect. So, um, I first of all, thank you so much for allowing me to be here on this food for thought, um, especially during this month. Um, I'm happy to partner with you all and to be a funder of the Whole Child Connection um, program that you have, Ruby. Um, thank you so much for sharing those um, great success stories that you're getting from the program. It's always wonderful to hear. So something that I like to share is um, this next video. It's a quick little video, and it's something that I want you to think about as you're watching this video. We all know somebody who's going through a difficult time, or maybe we've gone through a difficult time. And I want you to think about the things that you're struggling with or that you know somebody who has struggled with um, something and kind of make it personal as you're watching this video. So um, I will push play here. So let me go back to um, what Ruby was talking about and what Sonia has been talking about and what Chris has been talking about. Everyone has been talking about word of mouth. Everyone's been talking about community and us needing to be there together. So something for me, you all touched on it. I'll share a little bit of my story as why I take my role for Children's Services Council of Martin County so personally is I was one of those moms. I was one of those families, or I was a family, I'm a single mom, and I was one of those moms who 10 years ago had no idea where to turn. I had no idea that there were these programs available. I made too much money to get any sort of government assistance because I worked three jobs four jobs at one point, and, and I could barely put food on the table. And for me, it's something that until I got out of those places of um, having all these obscure jobs, I didn't find these resources. I, I found them too late. I found them at a time where I could volunteer and give back myself because I was in a place where I, I had no idea. I had no idea about Whole Child Connection and about the resources that were available to me. And right now in Martin County, there was 44% of the families who are living in an Alice population where they are just one emergency away from needing assistance. 
So that video that I just shared with you is, is something that is personal to me. You know, I, it's now my turn to be the light. It's now my turn to share the resources, to share and have these conversations because you never know what the person is going, is, is experiencing sitting next to you or your, your person who is checking you out at the grocery line. You never know and you're not having these conversations every single day, but because of the resources that Sonia is providing out in Okeechobee County in, in collaboration with the Treasure Code Food Bank, the word is getting out there. People are talking. People are having these conversations because it's hurting. It's not, it's not just hurting the impoverished in, anymore. You know, it, it's affecting now with the cost of inflation, it's affecting everybody. I'll, I'll even share a little bit further. Just, just this last year, I make a fair living wage. However, my my place where I was living for the past four years went up, went up in rent a thousand dollars, right? It went up, and I couldn't afford it, and so I was pushed into finding a place. And I'm so grateful that I was able to find this place. And then it was just time to get back on track financially because I had put so much of myself into debt because of trying to keep food on the table, trying to keep a roof over our head and trying to keep my insurances up for my car and so that I could drive to and from work and getting gas, all these things people are going through every single day. So I'll go into Children's Services Council and who we are. We are a quasi-government special taxing district that receives ad valorem taxes from your Martin County homestead. So if you live in Martin County and you are a Martin County homeowner, thank you so much because you have given us the opportunity to um, reinvest back into our future, which are our children and families. So we have been um, going since 1988 is when we were first voted in because we do get voted on. And then our first funding year was in 1989. And then we got reauthorized in 2014. So thank you again for all your support if you are a Martin County resident and you are a voter here because we are able to continue on and enhancing the lives of the children and families of Martin County so that we can enable them to attain their full potential. So we're investing in the gaps. So how we figure this out, this is all the fun stuff of, you know, we receive the ad valorem taxes, we receive a very small portion, we haven't gone up in our funding, um, but since the property values of the houses have, we've been able to expand our dollars that we can then again reinvest back into programs like Whole Child Connection and like some of those partnerships that you work with Ruby and, and being able to share those um, programs with the families that are coming to your door. So you can go on our website if you want to figure out if you are a Mark County resident, how much money is coming back to us and as you can see, it's not very much. It's it's less than your Netflix subscription, you know, <laughs> your annual Netflix subscription. But it does amazing work in the community. So we're able to fund 27 different providers um, and nonprofit organizations here in Martin County. And of that 27, we are able to fund 49 different programs. That is money going back to the families of Martin County who need it the most. There are so many gaps that are being seen, especially now, especially with that 44% of people who are struggling financially, especially with the um, mental health of things after COVID, you know, our numbers have just continued to go up as everybody across the board who's already spoken has been able to see people are in need of services. People are in need of food. I remember when I was going through it, I, I made sure that my daughter was eating, but I didn't eat. 
you know, I, I could, I could use that diet again, but I'm just kidding. Um, but I'm just really excited to be able to be in this position now so that I can help be the light and, and partner in community unity with Ruby, with Sonia, with Krista, with many different organizations that are available here in, in Martin County. And these are the 27 different funding prior providers. So you have the 211s, you have, there you go, you have the Treasure Coast Food Bank, you have Martin County Healthy Start Coalition, Little Lights Dentistry, so many families because of the issues that they're facing at home, they don't have access to dental care or um, they don't have access to have um, child care or they don't have the um, knowledge of these services. And we want to change that. We want to change the future for them to be able to support and have this um, programming in their lives because we all need it. We all needed a little support. And whether you went through something like I did or you know somebody who's going through it right now, there are programs available. We live in a very generous, wonderful community that truly cares. We recognize that it takes a village and we recognize that there are gaps that need to be met and need to be filled. So that's what Children's Services Council does. We love to be able to bring together the community and community unity in a way that we have each other's backs. We are all human and we are all experiencing different things. And I think it's important for us to be able to, to share these resources. And um, that is just one reason why I enjoy being in this place of uh, being able to share my story, being able to share the stories of others who have experienced like and wise situations. And um, if you are interested in following um, our journey and sharing and interviewing our local providers and local community partners. Um, we have a YouTube channel and we have Spotify and all of our social medias. Um, it's CSCMC. Um, you can find us through um, putting that in and or reaching out to me. Um, I know I forgot to get <laughs> give a contact card, but um, I'm here to help connect the community to um, the resources. And I'm here to help share those um, pain points that many of our families are experiencing today. And I'm just really grateful that we have such wonderful individuals who truly make it their mission, like Ruby and Sonia and Krista and like everybody here who, who make it their mission to be that light. And so thank you for being the example of having community partnerships and being able to really share that information. We are proud supporters of Treasure Coast Food Bank and this whole child connection. And we will continue to be proud supporters and um, whatever resources that you need from us, we are happy to, to give. So thank you so much for this opportunity to speak about the community partnerships and the importance of being human and being a light. So I will stop sharing. Thank you so much, Cherie, for um, providing us with that very powerful video that really does a beautiful job of, um, you know, really illustrating what so many people in our community are experiencing. And thank you so much as well for sharing your personal experience with us. Um, we really appreciate that. It really um, helps bring human faces to, you know, a lot of these facts and figures that we're kind of putting out there. Um, behind all of those are real lives that are being impacted. Um, so, so thank you again for sharing that. We really appreciate it. Um, and then I want to get to our final speaker. Um, Amanda Trott. Uh, she is a nutrition educator here at Treasure Coast Food Bank. 
Um, she is part of one of our newer programs um, that we have brought on to uh, really uh, tackle child nutrition uh, by providing nutrition education to um, all age groups. Uh, but Amanda is going to be talking to us a little bit about what we're doing with children in the community, how we're providing them with um, information about how to eat healthy and live a healthy life. So um, I'm going to turn it over to you, Amanda. And you're actually still on mute. Is everyone on the first slide as well? Is yes. that is that what is showing? Okay. Yeah. I got to yeah. skip. Yeah, through. you're going to have to scroll through a little. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. So It'll be like a good Krista recap said, for everybody. <laughs> yeah. My name is Amanda. I work here at Treasure Coast Food Bank. I cover Indian River County. We also teach children in Okeechobee County as well and adults in all four of the counties. Here we go. So SNAP um, SNAP Ed is a program of uh, Treasure Coast Food Bank and I teach uh, kids from five years old to teenagers um, up to 17. So we go in and do a one hour class for children five to 17 who are either their family is receiving SNAP benefits or they're eligible to uh, receive SNAP benefits. And this is so if a family is getting um, money for food that making healthy choices with the the money that they receive. Some of the topics that we go over are my plate, uh, trying new foods, limiting sh uh, sugary beverages, saturated fat and sodium, hydration, foods to eat every day, sometimes or occasionally. Um, we call the, those go slow or whoa foods uh, for kids and physical act activity. We also do a food demonstration. So this is just a, a chance for kids to help make the meal or the snack and to try new foods and have a positive association with the food. Um, it's shown that kids are more likely to try a food if they've helped made it themselves as well. So children ages 5 to 11, um, the goal is to create healthy habits at a young age. I get a lot of adults that tell me, I wish I learned this earlier. I wish I learned these things as a kid. Giving them simple messages of what, um, what they need to be eating in a day, the five food groups. Interactive ways to learn about health, such as reading books, playing games, keeping their attention that way and why nutrition is important for them. And then there's preteens and teens. So there, what motivates them is a little bit different. Um, the goal here is to create healthy habits at a young age, prevent disease and let them know that just because a disease may run in their family, like to lose the mindset of, oh, my dad has diabetes, so I'll probably have diabetes, that there are things you can do to prevent that. Um, emphasis on moderation, learning how to read a nutrition label, uh, limiting sodium, added sugars, and saturated fats, how to navigate a grocery store and go grocery shopping, how to eat better, but also eat better while on a budget. Um, appearance versus general health. So a lot of teens are influenced by their peers and social media. So knowing that the way someone looks might not always equal that they're healthy and that goes with themselves as well. 
low cost recipes. So uh, things that they can make that are easy when they're starting out in life and that are not going to uh, break the bank. And credible nutrition information versus social media. So where to find um, what to eat or how much to eat of certain things and where to find that versus just what they hear online. And um, healthy children becoming healthy adults. So nut through nutrition education, we can help neighbors of all ages increase their intake of nutritious foods. Child nutrition education plays an integral role in decreasing lifetime risk of obesity, chronic disease, and other adverse health outcomes related to diet and food choices. And Thank if you have so any questions, I will be in the Q&A. Thank you so much, Amanda, for sharing information about our, our new program. We're so excited that we're able to um, provide not just food to people, but resources to help them eat healthy and to, um, you know, make those uh, better choices, uh, being able to be healthy on a budget and um, develop lifelong habits that are really going to help increase their health outcomes. So thank you so much. Um, so uh, we're going to end um, the presentation or the visual part of this with uh, a little video, an overview video of uh, be able to see some of the programs we talked about in action, and then we'll be transitioning to the Q&A. So thank you for sticking with us. I know we're running over a little time, but um, we appreciate it. Okay, and I think we're um, we're going to get started with Q and A. Thank you to all the presenters for providing all this wonderful information and sharing your stories and 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 giving us all of this wonderful background about what you do and how you do it. So, um, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to let us know um, what questions you have. If they're directed at a specific speaker as well, um, or if they're just general questions. Uh, couple of us can jump in and, and provide responses. I think you can also enter questions in the chat if you um, would prefer. Okay, we have one question coming in that's, um, what is available for the Bureau Beach Gifford area? Um, so I, I can I can tackle that first, I'm sure. Um, 
We uh, we have a number of different types of programs that we run out of the Vero Beach Gifford area. Um, we have a number of agency partners that run food pantries and soup kitchens, um, and you can access that information on our website if you go to stophunger.org and go to the Get Help section. We have an agency locator where you can put in your specific zip code, and it will let you know which um, programs and um, uh, agencies that we work with are providing uh, services out there. Um, I will say that we, one of our big partners that we have in the Gifford area is the Gifford Youth Achievement Center. We work a lot with Teresa and um, her program for uh, seniors. Uh, we provide them with food on a biweekly basis for them to provide to uh, many of the seniors and also other members of their family to um, be able to help supplement uh, the needs of their household. Um, but we we have a number of partners in that area. I know that Amanda does um, coverage of, of the Indian River County area for the SNAP Ed nutrition classes um, and works with a number of wonderful partners as well. Um, so if you're looking for information about where you can uh, find a SNAP Ed class in Vero Beach, um, you can also go to our website, stophunger.org. Um, and we have a number of if you if you go to our uh, under our programs and then look under nourish, uh, there is a whole page for SNAP Ed and a place where you can link to find out where classes are coming up. Any other questions? Thank you, Dawn, for your comment. Um, she said, I am a teacher and a TCM in Okeechobee County. I know firsthand the struggles here. Um, so thank you for being here, learning about a little bit more about what we're doing in Okeechobee. Um, and uh, it's one of a number of programs that we run out there. Um, we're doing mobile distributions um, on a regular basis out there. We have some wonderful agency partners that are providing food through food pantries. And we're always looking for more um, partners and resources we can provide in Okeechobee. It's it's an important, important place for us to be providing services. So um, if you have any suggestions about other places that we can be working with out there, please feel free to um, send us a line and, and let us know. Okay, we have another one. How can community members get involved and support Treasure Coast Food Bank's children and teen pantry programs? Um, so there's a number of different ways that you can get involved and support our, all of our programming, um, uh, as well as, as specifically our children and teen pantry programs. Uh, one of the biggest ways to provide support is, is through funding, is through providing a donation. Um, and that could be done at stophunger.org. Uh, we have a donate button right there. Um, and it the our programming, all of the things that we're doing in the community, particularly our food programs, um, do rely on us purchasing a lot more food than we have had to do in the past. Um, so monetary donations are very important. But we're also looking for more agency partners. Um, if you are a part of an organization and you uh, work with children, you work with teens, and you're interested in partnering with us to bring some programming to them, whether it's hosting a class for SNAP Ed, um, opening up a teen pantry, uh, if you work with a school and you're interested in our school pantry program, um, we're always looking for more people to um, work with us and bring on board to expand our services to where they're um, most needed in the community. So, um, you know, and the other thing that you can do that's always wonderful and supportive is to volunteer. Um, volunteers are the lifeblood of our organization. We can't do everything that we do in the community without them. So if you want to learn more about our volunteer opportunities, um, you can also go to stophunger.org um, slash volunteer. Um, uh, we, it, we have a lot of opportunities sorting in our warehouse, but you can also come and help distribute food at a mobile distribution. Um, you can come help at our, um, summer meal program sites and help, um, distribute meals. I know that with the increases that Sonia was seeing over at the Okeechobee library, um, it was, it was sort of, 
Um, you know, it was great that you guys wanted to expand, but I know that staff capacity issues did come up with that. And I know that we uh, were recently able to connect you with some volunteers that wanted to come and help out. So um, that's another thing that we can do with our partners if, if there's a need. So if you're interested in um, volunteering with us or any of our partners, um, always looking for more people to do that in the community. Any other questions? Not seeing anything. I'm seeing somebody typing, but it has not come through yet. <laughs> yes, and I did not mention, and Jackie is reminding us through the chat, that the other way um, to learn more about what we're doing in the community is to follow us on social media. Um, we're on a number of different platforms and um, we're always posting information about different services that we provide, um, different events that we have coming up in the community and, um, you know, different information and, and stories as well of some of the people that we work with in the community, families and, and neighbors that are um, uh, benefiting from our services and, and showing the impact on their lives and, and sh just sharing their personal stories. So um, another great way for you to learn what we're doing, what our some of our partners are doing. We do try to highlight and feature our partners as much as we can as well. I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. So um, I think we're going to wrap up. Um, thank you guys again for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Um, thank you again to all of our speakers. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time and sharing your stories and, and all of the wonderful work that you're doing in the community. Um, Want to let everybody know that we're, um, we're going to be taking the month of August off for our Food for Thought program, but we will be back in September. Um, for um, a continuation of our learning series. And there will be more information available about the September uh, Food for Thought um, very shortly. So keep an eye on our uh, events calendar and, um, and, and we'll be sharing all of that information with you shortly. So thank you again for being here and um, have a great rest of your day. <laughs>